Hi folks, how's it going? I hope we're all keeping well. You're very welcome to the first 2021 video of the current lockdown. Um, so guys, how is it going to work? Okay, again, we've done this last year as well. What I want you to do is have your notes copy, uh, your pen and some colouring pencils or whatever uh, with you in front of you at all times. Okay, and the reason for this is because as we go along, I am going to ask you to pause the video and maybe take something down or answer a couple of questions. Okay, so before the Christmas holidays, we had began looking at the coasts. So for the first couple minutes of this video, I'm just going to do a quick bit of revision on this. Okay, so the coast. Okay, when we talk about the coast, what, what, what do we mean? Well, we're talking about the power of the sea and how the sea and the waves erode the coastline, okay? We know, if you look at a map of Ireland here, okay, that the west of Ireland is far more indented and kind of jagged compared to the east. Why is this the case? It's because of the ocean. This, the ocean to our west, between Ireland and America, the Atlantic Ocean, all right? It's a very vast ocean. Uh, it affects Ireland's weather. It also, uh, this weather can also cause huge waves, okay? So the west of Ireland is seen as a good place to go surfing. Why is this? Because there's lots of big waves here, okay? And these waves also erode, okay? There's, there's a, they, they erode and they deposit material. So what does erode mean? Erode is to when it's, when it's some, uh, the wave breaks down something, where whether it, it breaks, starts to break down bits off the coast or a cliff, and it deposits stuff. What does deposit mean? We know deposit deposition is to drop something okay to drop something um in this case you know things like sand beaches um bits of shingle get dropped by the sea okay so a bit of a recap over waves so waves waves are the main force behind shaping our coastline so our coastline our cliffs our beaches are all formed and caused by waves. So waves cause erosion, deposition, and transportation along our coastline. Okay. Um, waves are caused by the wind. Okay. So when you're on the coast and you feel it's very windy, that wind will also mean that there's probably going to be some strong or decent sized waves as well. Okay. And Waves can be powerful or they can be kind of light, okay? So, you know, you've probably been in the sea before and you might feel just the waves coming in around your ankles, okay? They're probably kind of light waves or you might have been in the sea where there's more powerful, violent waves. Um, you know, these waves might physically, when they hit you, they might actually hurt you, okay? So the power of these waves depends on two things. Number one, the wind speed. So if you've got a 10 kilometer an hour wind, that's going to result in very, very light waves. If you've got a 60 kilometer an hour wind, that's going to result in quite big waves. Okay. Uh, the second thing that uh, impacts wind, uh, or sorry, wave power is the wind fetch. And we know the wind fetch is the distance the wind blows. So if the wind only blows for, say, 500 meters, that mightn't result in very powerful waves. If the wind is blowing for five kilometers, that might result in, in, in bigger waves. Okay, think about an elastic band, all right? If you get an elastic band and you pull it back maybe three inches and let it go, it mightn't go very far. But if you get that elastic band and pull it back maybe 30 inches and then let it go, it's going to result in a powerful release of energy, okay? You're a powerful wave, all right? So think about it like that, okay? So the faster the wind and the longer the fetch, the more powerful waves will be, okay? And diagram here, guys, again, I'm flying through this quick because we have done all this already, so it's just a bit of a recap, okay? So there are two main parts of a wave. There's the swash and the backwash. So the swash is the bit, if you stand along a coast and you let and the, and the wave hits the beach and it hits, it hits you or goes around your ankles, that's the swash. Now, when you, feel, when you look and you feel that wave go back out towards the sea, that's the backwash, okay? So again, the wave hits the, the coastline, okay? That's the swash. As you the, the wave retreats back out to sea, that's the backwash, okay? And there are two parts, the swash and the backwash are in every single wave, okay? But there are two particular types of wave we must know as well. So we've got a constructive wave and a destructive wave. A constructive wave, think of it the name, if, 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 what's it going to do? It's going to construct something, okay? So, for example, beaches, the sand on a beach has been deposited or dropped by constructive waves, 
okay? And a constructive wave is where the swash, so the wave that hits the beach, is greater than the backwash, okay? So how does that work? Well, think about it. If, if the swash is powerful, okay, the swash is strong, it hits the beach, okay? And these waves, they carry things. They carry bits of sand and sediment and small pebbles. So the swash hits the beach, it's carrying its pebbles, but the backwash is really weak. So the strong swash will carry pebbles and leave them on the beach. And then the weak, the backwash is so weak, it does not have the energy to carry this material back out to sea. All right. So as a result, this material gets dropped along our beach. Okay. And it builds up the form of beach. Okay. Your destructive wave is where the backwash is greater than the swash. Okay. So how does this work? Well, you've got a weak swash, it hits the beach, and over time, like this is over like thousands of years, as the swash continuously hits the beach, it'll uh, it'll erode parts of or it'll erode the beach or the cliff or whatever it may be. Okay. Um, and if there's a strong backwash, this strong backwash will carry the material that is eroded, the broken down material. So if it breaks a bit off of a sea cliff, it'll carry this material away back out to the sea. Okay, so a constructive wave, strong swash, but the, the backwash is weak, so it cannot carry material away. So mater material gets dropped or deposited by the strong swash, and it stays there. It does not get carried away by the backwash. A destructive wave, you've got a weak swash, Okay, this weak swash, although it's weak, over time it'll still erode the cliff, and then the bits of the cliff that are broken off will get, um, will get dragged away by the strong backwash. Okay, now how do waves erode? So we're focusing on erosion now. Okay, so very similar to rivers, waves erode basically would all through all the same processes. Okay, guys, I don't, I, I know you have this already down in your copy, so I don't want you to write this down or anything. Okay, so um, method number one of erosion. Okay, so hydraulic action, the physical force of the waves breaking down the coastline. Okay, so if we look up here, like if you, if you for example, stand in the sea or, or, or on a beach and a massive wave hits you, that's going to hurt. Okay, that's the power of waves breaking down the coastline. That's hydraulic action. Okay, uh, second method is abrasion. Okay, when loose material gets thrown against the coastline by waves. So as waves hit the coastline, they carry pebbles and rocks, and these pebbles will damage the coastline as well. Okay, so for example, I mean, if you if, if someone throws a bucket of water at you, yeah, that it, the water hitting you might be uncomfortable. But if someone gets the same bucket of water and they put stones in it and they throw it at you, that's going to be a lot more painful because those stones are going to hit you as well. Okay, and those stones are going to hit off the cliff and erode the cliff. Okay. We have compression. Now, compression is not really, uh, is not, would, wouldn't have been in rivers, okay? But compression is a new one for the coast. It's when air gets trapped in cracks and joints by waves, okay? When the waves are treated, the pressure gets released and can shatter the rock, okay? It's a bit like if you ever get a, if you ever get a, a syringe in, in science and you put your, your, your thumb over the, the nozzle of the syringe and you try and, you try, you, you, you try and suck in air, you try and push out air, you can't really do it because of the trapped air. But then when you release your finger, okay, uh, you'll be able to shoot out the air really quickly. Okay, that's kind of what happens here. Air gets trapped, okay, and it's trapped by the water. When the water comes back, when the, the backwash retreats, the air gets released really quickly and that can cause the cliff to shatter. Okay, uh, fourth method of erosion is solution. So um, soft rock, like limestone, for example, very soft, weak rock, and it gets broken down and dissolved by the minerals in the water. So for example, if water contains something like carbon dioxide, that will react and break down limestone, okay? And that's similar to rivers, all right? Um, and then uh, attrition. So attrition, stones carried by waves hit against each other and become worn down, smooth, and rounded, okay? So if you ever think of like, you know, oh, that was a war of attrition, or it was a battle of attrition. That's basically where two sides knock the absolute stuff out of each other. Okay, and that's the same thing here, attrition. If you ever if you're ever on the beach in Bray in County Wicklow, you'll notice it's a pebble beach, there's lots of pebbles on it, and there's lots of really smooth, um, smooth pebbles and rocks that are really good for skimming along the surface. Okay, those rocks were shaped and smoothed by attrition. Okay. So moving on to our next slide. We have features of coastal erosion. Okay, so 
these features here, guys, we must be able to identify these. Okay, we don't need to know in detail about how they're formed, but we must be able to identify them because on our exam, we could be asked, we could be given a diagram such as this and we could be asked to uh, label it. Okay, so starting off here, first feature of coastal erosion, a sea cave. Okay, a sea cave, we know what a cave is. Uh, you know, a cave is like an inlet or passage in the rock that you can kind of walk into. How does a sea cave form? When a sea cave forms as waves hit the coast constantly, okay, there could be lines of weakness, as you see here, a crack or a line of weakness, and this line of weakness will get eroded way quicker than the rest of the rock, and eventually this will form a cave, okay? Now, sometimes it, this erosion can continue uh, out to the other side of a cliff, and this can form uh, so this thing here called a sea arch, okay? So the erosion, so hydraulic action, abrasion, etc can continue the whole way through the rock face and come out the other side forming a tunnel which is also known as a sea arch okay now sometimes a sea arch okay um can so you see a sea heart a sea arch here you can see the headland above it now sometimes this headland is not very stable okay and sometimes this headland can collapse in and that separates out this part of the sea arch from the rest of the cliff and this leaves behind a stack. So if you look here, this sea stack here used to be an arch. There used to be a piece of land here joining the sea stack to the rest of the cliff. But this piece of land eventually collapsed in and this left behind a sea stack. Okay. Um, now sometimes through constant erosion, okay, it's a bit like cutting down a tree, okay? So the waves are constantly, they're eroding the bottom part here of the sea stack and they're making it weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And what can happen is this sea stack can then collapse in and it leaves behind a sea stump, or like a tree stump almost, okay? So it's a bit like if you start to cut, if you start to hack away with an axe at the bottom of a tree over time, the tree will eventually collapse and you'll be left behind uh, with a stump, okay? Over here we have a blowhole, okay? Now sometimes, a sea cave, all right, these lines of weakness can extend upwards to the surface, okay? And it, if this is the case, as water keeps attacking the sea cave, okay, the water keeps attacking the sea cave, it'll start to erode the lines of weakness upwards here. And sometimes this can form a blowhole which will eventually reach the, the, the surface, okay? And if it reaches the surface, all right, it can form what's called a blowhole, okay? It can it can make its way up to the very top and form a blowhole, all right? So folks, what I want you to do now is I want you to pause the video and I want you to take down the, this diagram in front of you, okay? And this is all, this, this is gonna conclude today's lesson, okay? So this is all I want you to do. I want you to neatly draw that diagram into your copy okay and label it all right make sure it's very clearly labeled okay and what i what i'd appreciate it guys is if you can uh take a picture of that work and send it send it to me either on schoolwise or uh on my uh my email um so guys what's going to happen is again look it's second lockdown we're kind of nearly used to at this stage as i'm going to be uploading work i'm going to be sending you links to these videos and as the videos go there's going to be various tasks in the videos that i want you to do okay so you'll be hitting pause and you'll be carrying out a task whether it's answer some questions take down some notes or in this case drawing a diagram okay folks thanks a million for tuning in um, oh yeah, another thing guys, you're at the videos, I'm going to be uploading the videos to correspond when we have classes. So look at your timetable and see when you have geography with me, that's when I'll be sending out these video lessons with uh, accompanying work. Okay, so guys, thanks for tuning in, Do not, don't forget to send me on that work and we will see you in our next lesson.